Hi everyone, welcome to another Hatton's Model Railways live stream and another live session showing you some of the most famous locomotives to work in the UK and the models that they have inspired. This morning we're taking a look at the quirky but infinitely useful British Rail Class 73 locomotives. They've been in service now for up to 60 years of operation and they show no signs of stopping. So let's take a little bit of a look at the story behind these locomotives, the models that they have inspired, both past and present. And if you do have any questions regarding the Class 73 locomotives, please do put them in the chat and we'll answer them throughout the stream. Otherwise, let's get started. And as with every real railway profile we do, we have to start a little bit earlier than the 73s were introduced to understand exactly why they did make an appearance on the network. These locomotives were used across the south of England, mainly introduced for the southern region of British Railways. And at the time, in the late 1950s, there was a huge effort to expand the third rail electrification into the Kent coast. It was planned before the Second World War, unfortunately postponed, but the services then were planned to be electrified. This also included a lot of the freight traffic and the standard passenger traffic, as well as a huge amount of multiple units which were coming into service. One slight problem with this is, although it's quite easy to electrify your main lines, Electrifying a lot of the freight yards was quite problematic with it being quite health and safety conscious if you're laying electrified third rail everywhere. You can't have your shunters walking around on that. The first solution was to put up tramway style pantographs and catenary. And 25 of these locomotives, the British Rail Class 71, were built. You'll just see in the middle of the locomotive there that it does have an overhead pantograph as well as third rail pickup collector shoes. And these were used to be used on the tramways style catenary, as we mentioned in the yards. This was a really successful system, but as you can imagine, putting up huge amounts of catenary and poles, etc., to suspend it really was quite expensive in the freight yards. So British Rail went back to the drawing board and decided it needed a locomotive that could handle the power on the electric to the same power as locomotives in use at the time, including the aforementioned Class 71 and the diesel Class 33 locomotives, but also needed its own little diesel power unit to be able to handle the short journeys into unelectrified yards. And this is what they came up with, the Class 73. It's got the third rail collector shoes, as you see on the picture there, but it also has a 600 horsepower English electric power unit. So this is more than enough to be able to handle short freight duties and shunting into yards which aren't connected by the third rail. So suddenly you've removed the issues of having the electrified railway system in yards, making it infinitely safer for staff. This showed some other opportunities too. The locomotives could be used in work sites where the power was turned off when track was being maintained, or indeed they could be used down onto the dockside railways at Southampton and other places on the Channel Coast. So the design really became useful pretty much before it was constructed. Six of them were built as trial locomotives at Eastleigh to make sure everything worked as planned, and these were introduced in 1962. The design really was an immediate success. As you've probably already guessed, there were so many different ways for these locomotives to be operated and so many different uses that they had. So 43 more were commissioned and these were built by English Electric themselves in Newton Lee Willows. And these were built between 1965 and 1967. The original locomotives were delivered in a green livery, but the later models were released in a original blue, as you see here. And later, heading into the 1970s, they were painted in the standard British Rail blue livery with full yellow ends. Unfortunately, the freight passenger side of the services, especially the freight side, shall we say, was really starting to come to an end in the 1960s. So the main purpose that these locomotives were built for, the mixed traffic duties, really was starting to disappear. But the versatility of the Class 73 couldn't be ignored. The 1600 horsepower that it was capable of an electric meant that it could shift some really heavy trains. And with the ongoing electrification of the network, 
the Class 73 found even more duties across the rails. So working down into the likes of Bournemouth and Southampton on some of the express services running out of L London Termini, such as Waterloo and Victoria. One thing you'll see here on the front of the locomotive is it has exactly the same multiple working cables as a lot of the Southern Railway's electric units of the time. And as you can see right here, it's absolutely ideal to use with one of those multiple units. Again, increasing the versatility of what these locomotives could do. These really were a go anywhere, do anything locomotive. British Rail had thought of everything when they came to the design, even making them slightly slimmer than most locomotives at the time. As a part of the network down to Hastings in the southeast of England did have tighter route clearances. The locomotives were built to handle that, so they were one of the few locomotives that could head down into that part of the network. And indeed, they were seen all across the southern region where the power was available. And sometimes a little bit further off it as well, using the 600 horsepower diesel engines. So they carried on throughout the 1970s and 1980s on many different duties, working on some of the remaining freight services too. In the 1980s, they did see a resurgence in the new Gatwick Express trains that started from London to Gatwick Airport, which was an express service introduced in the mid 1980s. As you see here, the continuation of the electrification down to Weymouth in the late 1980s also saw further use of these particular locos alongside the multiple units that were available at the time. So they were now heading more towards the passenger duty side, proving a really reliable design and also very cheap to run as well with them being completely electric powered when on the third rail. Heading into the 1990s, a brief bit of prestige for the class 73. A 73 101 was painted into the full Pullman livery, as you see here, to be used on some of the Orient Express trains and some of the other Pullman duties that had been working around this time. But that wasn't the start of the tale for luxury trains in the Class 73. They had been used on certain duties and some of the premier workings on the Southern region right from their introduction, including services such as the Golden Arrow. With more and more liveries coming through, the privatization of the railways and the sectorization of the railways was really taking place. We see here a locomotive used on the Gatwick Express services painted in the familiar Intercity Swallow livery. And right here in front of me, I have the familiar Network Southeast colour scheme, which was used for locomotives, both on freight and passenger duties at the time. A number of the locomotives did remain with purely freight operators, with an electric locomotive really handy to have on some of the varied freight that was in operation in the Southeast. And indeed, this came into privatisation too with companies such as EWS finding a real use for the Class 73s. But a brand new operator took them, well, pretty much no places that they had gone before, really. And this was GB Rail Freight. They invested heavily in the Class 73 in the early 2000s. By this time, the locomotives were being withdrawn from their passenger duties. They were being replaced with more modern multiple units that were coming into the railway scene in the early 21st century so the locomotives were being made available to other private freight operators gp rail freight managed to do quite a lot with these locomotives and indeed still has a quite a large fleet of the class 73s these can be seen across the southeast and sometimes heading further into england too on different duties indeed at the moment they're used heavily on engineering duties and the railhead treatment trains that you can see so some of the private operators and the passenger operators did retain a small number of the Class 73s after their withdrawal. The Gatwick Express stopped using the locomotives in the mid-2000s. Southwest Trains remained a retained a very small fleet to be able to rescue multiple units as and when required. Indeed, I believe they still have one which performs that duty to this day. The Southern Railway as well still has a unit which performs a very similar duty as well as route learning workings. But with the availability of the class, a lot were coming up for sale and available for different operators. 
Network Rail took on a couple of the locomotives to use on the different test trains. And this really is where we started to see the 73 leave the southern region for places a little further afield. But I don't think any of us quite expected just how far the 73 would get. And this is where the story takes a really bizarre twist. The locomotives were an infinitely successful design, having worked for up to 40 years at this point. But people really wanted to keep that design going and increase the usefulness, make it so you can use these 73s pretty much anywhere in the country. So in 2013, GB Rail Freight started re-engineering five of the locomotives with a brand new diesel power unit. Diesel technology had come on quite a lot in the last 50 years, so a far more powerful power unit was able to be put in in the place of the 600 horsepower English electric unit. And this resulted in locomotives such as this. You can see this familiar 73 shape, but a lot of differences there too. And these locomotives were provided with an MTU power unit, which had 1600 horsepower. So now they could create a similar amount of power on both electric and diesel. The first five locomotives were provided to GB Rail Freight to use in the south of England. And then six more were used here, which really took the 73 as far away as it could go from the southern region. This is actually at Fort William in the Scottish Highlands. And these locomotives are used for the Caledonian sleeper duties between Inverness, Fort William, Aberdeen and Glasgow. And who thought we'd see a 73 at not only six of them operating regularly in the Scottish Highlands, but this just shows the versatility of the original locomotives and the rebuilds too. Not to be outdone, Network Rail acquired two extra locomotives and started creating what they referred to as the Ultra 73, doing their own version of a life extension program. This differed from the GB Rail Freight locomotives You've got two Cummins power units on there, which created 1,500 horsepower. They didn't retain any electrical capability. They work now purely on diesel. And they were introduced in 2014. So you can see those up and down the network on various test trains. But it's testament to these locomotives that the Class 73 still survive in such huge numbers. Many of them still are in the original condition. As we mentioned there, GB Rail Freight retains a large fleet of the original style locomotives, as well as some of the rebuilt ones too. So even as it comes up to the 60th year of the Class 73, there is still a lot to be said and a lot to be told, and certainly we'll be telling the story for many years to come. Looking at the models, it's a fantastic time to model the 73. It's it's almost the perfect time, really, as there are free models either available or coming through in all of the major scales, which are absolutely crammed with details. Starting at the right hand side here, we have Dapol's Engage 73, which is recently, very soon, shall I say, going to be re-released in a variety of different liveries, covering the whole lifespan of the Class 73 locomotives. Dapol in the mid 2010s upgraded their model to double O scale. And again, they've produced it in a lot of liveries from the classes past and present, starting in the original green of the 1960s, heading through some more modern color schemes from the late 20th and early 21st centuries. And of course, Heldron have just announced a model in O gauge too. So you O gauge modelers who want one of these versatile modelers, models, shall I say, can get one of these now and they're due for release in early 2022. All the information on that is available in the description. I've put a link in there for you for every single Class 73 we have available right now, including the brand new fully super detailed models that you see here and some of the older models too. Lima themselves introduced a model in the 1980s in double O scale, which you can still pick up. So if you want a bargain entry to the Class 73 market, you can certainly take a look at that or its Hornby predecessor. But if you want to have a look at a super detailed model of a Class 73 from N-Gage, Double O, and the forthcoming O-Gage Helger model, do take a look at that link in the description and there's far more information there. But these are a locomotive that keeps on giving. They go anywhere, they do anything, certainly on the southern region, but even now they're spreading the wings to as far away as possible as they can get, right up to the Scottish Highlands, as we mentioned there with the Caledonian sleeper 
locomotive and they're still going too. There's no signs of these locomotives being withdrawn. There's a lot of investment being put in by all the private operators now. And indeed, there is a small number of them in preservation too that you may have seen in some of the original liveries around and about on the UK's preserved railways. So if you want to introduce one of these unusual locomotives to your layout, it's a really great one to add. You can have an electric locomotive on your railway you don't need any catenary, you don't need a third rail, but you can still have an electric loco running on your layout. So that's got to be an unusual thing and certainly is a great part for anyone who's modelling the southern region and beyond from the mid-1960s. So take a look at that link in the description for more info on the Class 73 and the models that are available. I'll just let you have one more look at those images before I go. But otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed today's stream. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about the Class 73 and its history and the models that have been produced as well. Do forget, don't forget, shall I say, to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our Facebook page for more great videos like this. We've got model railway skills casts, real railway profiles and more information besides. And don't forget to click that link in the description for more information. Otherwise, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.